I did my bit for the homeless, ranting at the indifference of authorities from the comfortable haven of a newspaper column. When the hypocrisy got to me, I signed up for a week on Skid Row. Who do you think you can? I was your best friend. Now you tell me your story. It's a world inhabited by invisible people. We pass them without seeing them as casually and indifferently as we pass our own reflections in storefront windows. Hey, Tommy! Chalky? I've been looking all over for you. What do you got in there? That's what I wanted to show you. I found them over at the seven in a lot. Oh, look. He couldn't belong to nobody, could he? He's starving. You think so? <laughs> yes. I can feel his ribs. What are we gonna do? Well, I, I don't know. You get milk, uh, cat food or something. Look, the, uh, the store's still open. How much does it cost? Look, uh, I only got 35 cents. Don't worry about it, okay? I'll get it. Oh, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no that ain't right, Tommy. No, no. that's all right. No, no, you owe no, me. No, you no, owe here. me. No, you owe me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tommy went to get you some chow.
hard to look. Come on, I asked you a question. Is he gonna be all right or what? Gonna be. Was he ever? exactly rush away with the information, either. A, pa, a bum gets mugged. So what, it's not like a human being or something. No, no, we'll handle it. All right, this, uh, this guy, with a friend of yours? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's the guy in the world. A little retarded. His name was Chalk. Chalky? He didn't exactly give me his business card. I'm sorry. All right, all right. This cat, we found her. This guy didn't have anything else in the world except a stray. I found him over there buried on there, all that garbage. God, he was no, he was hardly breathing. Wait a minute. Did you get a good look at uh, them beating up this uh, chalky? They chased everybody all over the place. They had hockey sticks. All right, all right. We got the plates. Let's uh, find these hockey bucks. You sure you can ID them? <laughs> Sounds like they finished their homework. SMO328. Yeah, what if I do? That's him. What the hell's going on? We need to talk with you. Talk about what? There's another one. Who? Oh, this guy over here? Yeah, yeah. You, let's go. Come on. <laughs> hey, guys, where's the, uh... There's the other guy. You go. Come on. Hey, you want to put my rights? I'd be glad to read your rights. It's going to be a quiz, too, so pay attention, okay? Come on. Hey. Really, I don't know what the hell this is about. You know damn well what this is about. Now get your coat if you know what's good for you. I want a lawyer. That is your privilege. Repent! Repent, you sinners! The day of wrath cometh! Oh, we can do it in another room. Wanna open that up, please? You're in the penalty box. We'll call you when your lawyer calls us. Anything? Kevin. He has the right to remain silent. Same as the other two. Ah, oh, a major in hockey and a minor in law. O'Brien. I guess he's got a PSC. You got him dead to right on your assault, Tommy. I wish you'd get one of them to admit he was in the alley. In case Chalky dies? Oh, assault's one thing, homicide's another. Keep them separated. I don't want them getting their stories together. Yeah, don't worry, Lieutenant. We got one of them locked up in the cell in Elaine's office. The other one's downstairs. All right, it's a damn shame you didn't see him actually bashing the guy. But somebody else came along? Come on. How the hell else could it happen? Okay, I got it, thanks. That's a good question, Tommy. That was the hospital. How is he? Well, he's unconscious, but nobody hit him. What do you mean, nobody hit him? I he saw that guy. strangled. Garrett. Now, forensic says it was probably a scarf or something. They found fibers. This uh, jock with the hockey stick chokes a guy. How about it, Tommy? Mm -hmm. Does Baldwin have a scarf? Maroon and gold? A scarf? I don't know. Could have choked the guy with his own scarf. Chalky didn't have a scarf. I don't remember any scarf.
Next to Frederick. He stinks. You don't like it, you can sleep on the street. Now get back there. And you. Yes. You're going upstairs. What for? There ain't any beds up there. It's just power. We're fighting. That's what for. You got a problem, you come to me. You don't start a fight. All right. On your way. And I don't want any more trouble. Out of either of you. Okay, boys, back off, back off. There's nothing to see. Take it easy. The next time there's any trouble, will you call me? It's not your job to get in the middle of it. Sorry. And what's that cat doing here? It's Chalky's cat. Chalky didn't have a cat. He found it just before they jumped him. Well, we got people here we can't take care of. People on the street we don't even have room for. There's only a cat. How much room can he take? Look, I don't want an argument, Tommy. There's plenty of animal shelters, only a few for people. Now, get rid of it. Braden Dean? Yeah, I'm Braden Dean. Kevin O'Brien. Hi, I'm Frank Jambon. We're uh, trying to identify a man who may have stayed here once. The only name we have for him is Chalky. Oh, yeah, Chalky. What makes people do things like that to other people? They treat the homeless like they're animals. We think it might be an attempt to murder, Mr. Dean. We're trying to find out who did it. We heard there were some boys. Yeah, we're looking into it. Come back to my office. Yeah. Tommy. Look, enough's enough, huh? I haven't got my story yet. This was Chalky's treasure. The only thing he owned in the world, apart from the clothes he had on. He used to look at those pictures for hours. I'm not sure he could read. But he left the box here so the other guys could look at them. His real name's Samuel Willis? That's right. You don't know who this Susan is who sent all this stuff to you? Yeah, he said she was his sister. Mind if I keep one of these? Go ahead. Now, do you know anybody who may have had a grudge against him for any reason? Yeah, life had a grudge against him. <laughs> he could no more take care of himself out in the street than, than you could survive on the top of Mount Everest. Like most of them, he just wasn't equipped for it. You mean mentally, like retarded? And emotionally, he had a child's mind. Not a world for children out there. Why wasn't he in a hospital or an institution or something? Oh, he was. Little city closed it three years ago. Look, I understand you're police officers. I know what your job is. But what happened to Chalky didn't start tonight. It started years ago. If you really want to know what happened to him, find out why he was left out there all alone. Dean! Dean! Why Brain Dean? Winston's huh? dead! Oh, Winston cashed in! When? Tonight, the bottom of the car. Silly Mrs. Ferguson again. You can see that we're not making that much money. Objective scientific analysis here. The report says that 
David Winston died of cirrhosis of the liver, then he died of cirrhosis of the liver. Just uh, have another look and tell me that again, please. You can see for yourself. Typical jaundice associated with liver malfunction. Well, look at his hand. You can see from his fingernails that... What? What is it? Uh, nothing. Uh, I need to check out a few things. I'll get back to you later. Thanks very much. But he's going to recover. It's really too early to say. Who's this doctor? I am. I'm sorry, but aren't you a little... Uh... Young to be a doctor? All doctors are young sometimes. It's a phase we go through. He's so seriously ill, don't you think that a surgeon should be with him or someone like that? In this ward? The fact is, he's lucky to have me. I want him moved out of here and into his own room. Look. Right now. Why don't you take care of it for her, okay? Okay, but somebody's gonna have to be responsible for the bill. I'll be responsible for the bill. When I was young, I used to think he was the most wonderful. My big brother. He was hit by a car when he was 12 years old. After that, he just couldn't learn anything anymore. Do you know what he was doing with his life recently? Did he have any enemies? I haven't seen him in years. I tried, but I I'm a flight attendant, and I've been stationed in Europe for a long time, and when I do come in, it's only for a few days. I know what you're thinking, and that you don't believe me, but I've tried to take care of him. I've done everything I could. When the hospital shut down, I even had him stay with me for a little while. I even changed my schedule so that I could spend more time with him. But he kept running away. He knew he didn't fit in with my friends and everything. He felt that he made them feel uncomfortable. Sometimes people can be very heartless. They only knew how sweet he was. wool and alpaca scarf. The lab says there's no way to trace either the fibers or the dye, and it's the only physical evidence we got. We ought to charge that Baldwin kid. He was there. He was fighting with the victim. In the first place, Tom didn't see a scarf, and Tom sees everything. In the second place? It all depends what the coroner says about the second man, David Winston, if it turns out he was strangled. Well, what are we talking about here, Kevin? Are we, are we talking about some kind of serial killer that goes around strangling bums? O'Brien. Hey, it's Dr. Jennings here. I did another makeup on that DOA. Maybe you ought to apply for my job. He was strangled. Strangulation. All right, doctor, I uh, appreciate it. Oh, wait a minute. This is interesting, too. We found wool and alpaca fibers on his neck. All right, thanks very much. Same fibers. <laughs> Somebody better pull that MO file fast. Jim, I already did. There is nothing in the files. There's nothing in the computer on serial killers that matters. There's nothing connecting to anything. There's been one attempted homicide, another homicide. It won't be the last. Absolutely not. I'm surprised that anyone who knows me would even consider it. They won't let me keep him where I am. Well, maybe you shouldn't be there. I mean, look at you. That's the whole point. I've got to get back. You don't want me ruining your business. Look, I could call a car. He's busy. Uh, uh, Nick, <laughs> just Tom. take the cat and I'm gone. You take the cat and you're gone. Uh, but look, will you just... Nicky, will you just tell me... You bum. Uh, give me one good reason. One good reason? All right, I just reposted my apartment. That's one couch, two armchairs. There's three good reasons. You can stay here. This is a business, Tom. And stay downstairs. Catch mice in the cellar. There are no mice in the cellar. I'll catch something else. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Look, I think you should take one good look at this little cat. Come on, I so know you know what you're saying? No, too. Oh. Tom. Kirkwood, get back here. I gotta make a call.
Get out of here. I was here first. Leave me alone. Please. I'll get out. You can have it. We got something to be excited about here, haven't we? I don't know, Jim. They bring in homeless DOAs all the time. Now we got two strangled. How many of the ones we never investigated were homicides? They don't do autopsies on the poor, do they? Well, if they were looking for a strangulation, it's unlikely they found one. These guys don't exactly knock themselves out on these cases. If that's what it turns out to be, there are going to be a few people at the coroner's office out of work. Remember that guy in California that killed all those migrants and nobody knew about it? Yeah, one corona. Instead of looking for two bodies, might end up looking for a dozen. Or we might not. Look, have we got anything? We got a lead, anything, a foothold we can go on here? The guy that was killed in the pipe had that on him. Rules and regulations of the Northside Men's Shelter. The other victim paid a few calls there, too, so we'll pay them a call. Maybe we ought to have a couple of bodies exhumed. Kind of a spot check, see if there are any others. That's a little tricky, Frank, especially under the circumstances. What circumstances? The ones that question a coroner's competency. That's up to you. How soon can you have a court order? Well, I'm not sure I can. I got faith in you, baby. Frank! Looks like we got you at the wrong time. Huh? When's the other kind? What can I do for you, Detective? Uh, it'll just take a minute. Well, we won't have any water upstairs until I get this reconnected. Do you mind if I work while we talk? A man named Willard Kovacs was found dead tonight. Oh, my God. And we found this on him. So you think there's some connection between their deaths and the shelter? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. It's the one common factor. We have 40 beds. That comes to over 14,000 men sleeping here each year. Some stay a day, some a week. Last year alone, we had 9,000 separate individuals in here one time or another. And this year, we should exceed that number. Now, all these men who were attacked were staying here at the time, though. Chalky was. Uh, Kovacs? No, I haven't seen Kovacs since the summer. Winston was in uh, only a few weeks ago. Tommy, will you put the kettle on for our guest, please? Uh, no, no, that's fine. No, no, thanks. Can you think of anyone who might have had a reason in their own mind for striking out at these people? Well, when we first moved into this building, what, uh, six years ago, some uh, community groups put up a stink. They said we'd bring in vagrants. I tried to explain to them that's like saying the Humane Society causes puppies. Did you get any threats? Oh, you're reaching, detective. No, I'm not. I try not to take anything for granted. All right, I'll go back through my hate mail. What about the residents? Oh, they squabble over a piece of bread, a bunk, an insult. They're children. They don't go around systematically hurting people. What about someone you threw out? Maybe they got into a fight or they got into a mugging? Dream this up for revenge. Jockey, Winston, Kovacs, they weren't even here at the same time. If there's anything these guys have in common, I'd say it has to be something else. It's your turn, man. What do you mean, my turn? I thought we agreed on an hour each. I was out there for more than an hour. Come on, man. You were out there for 45 minutes. Look, it's like your watch. No, no. I'm gonna go check by the underpass. Come on, hey, loosen up your coat some more, man. Show him your skinny white neck. Casa! Be careful, man. Fair quarter, buddy? Get a job. Not very funny, Honcho. I've been hearing a lot of that lately. It's freezing out here. Aren't you cold? What do you think? Tommy, mean, it looks like we ran into a serial killer down here. That's not the story you've been looking for, right? You pick up anything that can help us out here? Blank. Doesn't make any sense. What's the point of bringing you down here, then? Just trying to make... I'm worried about you, Tommy. There's a lot of crazy things going on here. Yeah. I can't help thinking. It'd be so easy to come back to this. What are you talking about? Touch and go there for a while, Frank. 
A drinking problem? I had to straighten it out. What if I didn't? There's a lot of guys here. Doctors, lawyers. It could be just one more journalist. Doctors and lawyers? Come on. How the hell did these people get here? They're sick. They got a drinking problem. They need psychiatric care. You know, when they start out, there's no difference between them and us. They've given up, Tommy. That's the difference. Yeah. They've given up, Frank. That's just the symptom, not the disease. Come on, Tommy. We'll give you a lift home. Come on, come on. Come on, Tommy. It's the easy way out. checks out. He got out of the hospital yesterday. He's just a bum that rolls other bumps and nickels, that's all. Look him for assault. Right away. You know, Freddy's looking for the death penalty on this one, baby. Jam bone, mid up. Susan, what's wrong? This is not a very good idea. It's something I have to do. You don't have any idea what goes on in that place. You can't even imagine it. He's my brother, Frank. It's about time I did. This was his. Somebody else is using it right now. We don't have the luxury of mourning the departed here. My brother's not dead, Mr. Dean. Uh, sorry. I only meant he's not here, so his bed is free. They come and they go. I'll get his things for you. Thanks. <coughs> He's harmless. He's as gentle as your brother once you get to know him. You know my brother? I like him. Everybody does. That's true. I worried about him, but it was a pleasure to have him here. You worried about him? He was so helpless. Anyone could take advantage of him. He just couldn't take care of himself. It wasn't your job. It was mine. No one's to blame for all this. No one can cure it. I used to think otherwise, but now. Your brother cherished these things. I'm glad you'll have them. What'd you bring me? All the pictures you sent? I tell all the guys I have a sister who really goes to all these places. They never believe me. But I know it's true. How you feeling? This is Detective Jambone, Sam. He's gonna find the man that hurt you. 
Did you get a look at him at all? Oh, no. Did you notice anything about him? Uh, anything at all? No. I was running away from those guys. Dr. Chan to reception. And then I hid in the alley. Just like when we was kids. Unknowns. They're the ones that didn't go to Pottersville. Where did they go? I've been looking into that very thing. And? Well, first I turned the cemetery's office upside down for two hours, nothing. So I go back down to the morgue. They said they kept them for ten days, nobody claimed them, so they sent them to Pottersville. So no one knows where they are, right? Hey, this brother does not give up that easy. I figured they had to go somewhere. So I went down the shipping, and it turns out they were both picked up privately. Picked up by who? That's the good part. They were signed out to the same outfit. The Eternal Life Society is one of those cut-rate funeral services. Yeah, but who hired them? None of these men had relatives, right? Am I supposed to do all your work for you? The form didn't say. Well, it's got to say. You don't get a body released unless someone authorizes it, Colby. Mr. A. Anonymous. The Eternal Life Society. They have their own cemetery over on the East End. Detective O'Brien? Yes, yes. I'm Brewer, Internal Life Society. What is it you want to know about these particular arrangements? Who authorized you to pick up the bodies? What was the client's name? You mean the stiff? Uh, Kenneth Foster. Foster? I'm sure he's in here. I don't remember handling those arrangements, but that's hardly surprising, as more and more people are looking for a dignified alternative to costly and wasteful traditional forms. Mr. Brewer. Of course. Oh, that's our most popular model. Inexpensive, but notice how well it's held up. Uh, Mr. Brewer. Ah. Have you been giving much thought to the future, Mr. Jambioni? No, not really. You really should, you know. Oh, here it is. I'm afraid we have a slight problem, Mr. O'Brien. The party who made these simple but respectful arrangements has requested to remain anonymous. Mr. A. Anonymous. No, I don't think we do have a problem, Mr. Brewer. Now, someone had to authorize the burial of those bodies, right? Unless you want to assume sole responsibility in seeing this is a police matter, I don't imagine you do. I see. Well, I suppose there's no harm in your knowing. It's certainly nothing to be ashamed of. He often hired us to take care of the less fortunate. If only more people were as charitable. Who was it, Mr. Brewer? Don't tell him I told you. Braden Dean. Tom, can you come in here for a minute? I've been watching you, Tom. You're not what you seem. You're stronger than the others. You could pull yourself out of this sewer if you tried. I can't lie to you, Mr. Dean. I, I really admire what you're doing down here. Oh, I don't do a thing. Oh, you don't see that. How could you? I didn't see it either. <laughs> Look at this, Tommy. It's my thesis. I wrote it 20 years ago when I knew all the answers. I put them down in graphs and charts. So many homes, so many shelters, so many beds. A, a blueprint for changing the world with just a, a little more effort. And in a few years, the problem will be solved. We do 10 times, no, 20 times what we did then, and the misery never stops. I thought a few people who knew what they were doing and who cared would make a difference. But you have made a difference. The difference that I make to Chalky, or to the rest of them. What hope could I offer them? Me? To some of them, you're the only hope they have. There's no time. 
I'm dying, Tommy. The eleventh plague. Cancer. But you... You're different. You can get out of here. I know you can. You can do it. Do it now while you have a chance. I'll try to do that. You'll make it, Tommy. I know you will. Dr. Jennings? Ah. We've got three homicides here. Strangulations. Out of the six you dug up? Yep. All six were listed as having died from natural causes, right? I haven't forgotten that, O'Brien. I'm damn sure the press won't miss it either. Don't worry, they're not gonna learn it from me. Thanks, I appreciate that. But they'll get it anyway. They're terrific at that kind of thing. Do you think one of them will write in a story that this department hasn't had a budget increase in over five years? It's not exactly news. You know how many bodies come through here in a year? How many hours I put in on this job? Yeah, we got an idea. We make damn few mistakes. Thanks for catching these. Lovely, isn't it? I bought it in Scotland. More years ago than I care to remember. Do you know who I am, Mr. Dean? I had a suspicion you... My name's Tom Kirkwood. I write a column for the Eagle. Of course. Rather a good column, I think. Of you... Ever been to Scotland, Mr. Kirkwood? No. Pity. Such a lovely country. You're familiar with the concept of survival of the fittest, aren't you, Mr. Kirkwood? I've heard of it. It was a Scottish philosopher who suggested that the fittest are not perhaps who we think they are. The fittest he suggested of those that get by on the least. The cactus in the desert. These people I shelter. It's an interesting question, don't you think, Mr. Kirkwood? Very interesting. I used to believe it was true. You know, the poor you shall have always with you. Well, I took that to mean that they will survive. Will they, Mr. Kirkwood? Will someone take care of them when I'm gone? That's what troubles me in the night. Will they be taken care of? Or will they slip back to where they were so many years ago? You 
killed him, didn't you? With that scarf. Philosopher was right. They survived. Somehow they survived. And the meek shall inherit the earth. They don't have time for that, Mr. Kirkwood. I don't have time for that. But killing, my killing, God. saving, saving them from what this civilization, your newspaper, seems to represent, has in store for them. But it was kind of you to say you think my work makes a difference. Of course it doesn't. It never has. This has difference. Your friends will be here shortly. Mr. Dean, you know that. Doesn't matter. I have to go. Why don't you stay with us, Mr. Dean? So we can take care of you. Please. Just stay with us, Mr. Dean. Do they really live among us, or are they citizens of another country, a vast and teeming gulag of the dispossessed? No, don't turn away. Look in their faces. Do you see your brother, your son, an old friend, a co-worker, someone you went to school with, someone you once loved? No, you didn't see them? Not today. Tomorrow you could.
Do we really kill the things we love? And what does it kill in us? Braden Dean was never found. Perhaps in the despair of recognizing what he had done, he destroyed himself. But I don't like to think that. I like to think he merged into that faceless multitude. He's out there somewhere, living like one of them, dying like all of us.